The creations of the four Delamere sisters are still being reproduced 200 years later. I'm the only person continuing this tradition of painting Bleu de Arras porcelain. I hope it will not be the last. On the road from Paris to Lille, in the Hors de France region, lies Arras. This birthplace of Robespierre and capital of the former province of Artois is famous the world over for its baroque squares and belfry. But these beautiful, much smaller objects are also part of its heritage. The famous Bleu d'Arras porcelain named after its color. Christelle Perrier, a former ceramics teacher, fell in love with these distinctive blue patterns. Having learned the technique of Bleu d'Arras porcelain, she is now the only person in France producing and selling it. I come here regularly. It allows me to sketch the patterns I haven't mastered yet. Looking at them and drawing them gives me a greater understanding of them. Coming here helps me to perfect my craft. These patterns are very distinctive. They are painted in a cobalt oxide glaze and fired at a high temperature, between 1,280 and 1,300 degrees, which produces this intense blue that is so typical of Arras. These 18th century artists were inspired by nature, by these tiny flowers or sprigs, by these corn flowers or bachelor's buttons, by this rose which I am reproducing here, using the same techniques. The production of Arras porcelain dates back to the second half of the 18th century. At the time, this northern French city sought to compete with the prestigious factories in Tournai and Dresden with this blue made from cobalt oxide, which was inexpensive but very intense. Melanie Lara is the curator of the city's Musée des Beaux-Arts, which boasts the finest collection of Bleu d'Arras porcelain in the world. The factory in Arras was also renowned for its Asian designs, such as this circular pattern, inspired by Korean styles. This immortal is from Dresden. I haven't painted it yet. I dream of painting it. I need to study it more first. I'll come back and do some sketches. It's quite complicated. There is a repertory of widely varied forms to be found here. The teapot is the Asian piece par excellence. This garland of brambles is so refined and sumptuous. It's very hard to reproduce because there is a lot of symmetry in it. I think it's very pretty. They really were so skilled back in the day. The production of Arras porcelain didn't last long, only 20 years. During those 20 years, the Delamere sisters, who ran the factory, sold crockery to the city's wealthy residents. These pieces evoke a way of life which may otherwise have been forgotten. We no longer use this crockery, which is so typical of Arras. It reveals a usage, a lifestyle, which we don't really see today. Our habits are more standardized, and our crockery is standardized as well. These everyday objects tell us something about the inhabitants of Arras in the 18th century. The French Revolution brought production to a halt. It didn't resume until the 1960s, when Bleu d'Arras porcelain was rescued from oblivion. It was a local man, Henri Caudron, who found the Delamere sisters' recipe and brought about a revival of Arras porcelain. Since then, the expertise has been passed on by word of mouth, from one rescuer to another. Now it's Christelle's turn. I'm mixing up the cobalt oxide pigment. Before it's fired, the powder is a greyish mauve color. I'm going to thicken it with turpentine. 
which will give the cobalt oxide a bit of body. It has to be the right consistency. This is the exact same technique they used in the 18th century, I'm using the same products and the same tools. Painting on porcelain can't be improvised. You have to learn it at school. At school, you learn to paint in the Moustier or Rouen tradition. You take inspiration from the big, well-known factories in Vincennes and Chantilly, but you never learn about the Blue de Arras pottery. Bleu de Arras pottery is part of this city's heritage. It is your predecessors who will teach you these special techniques, using these special tools, how to paint an Arras flower. Because there is a precise way of painting an Arras flower, and all the other patterns, one after the other. There are codes for painting on porcelain. For example, the flower stems are always on the right. The tool I'm using is a type of stencil. It's an old tool dating from the 18th century. It was used by industrial designers for sketching in Indian ink. The Delamere sisters reinvented it, adding cobalt oxide, and they used it to paint these thin lines or strings that I'm painting now and all these dots or beads. The string of beads is very traditional in the Arras porcelain. I'm not painting on a sheet of paper. I have to adapt to this hard porcelain, so I have to remain steady and very concentrated. Using this technique and these tools, I can create different shades of blue by applying pressure, depending on how I handle my porcelain or my brush. This blue really inspires me. It's a beautiful colour. You can create lots of different shades of blue, from a pale blue to an intense deep blue. It's a very soothing colour. If she wants to retain the spirit of these late 18th century patterns, Christelle has no choice. She must use the same techniques as the ceramicists of old. The creations of the four Delamere sisters are still being reproduced 200 years later. I'm the only person continuing this tradition of painting Bleu de Arras porcelain. I hope it will not be the last. I hope that, in a few years' time, I will find that rare soul who wants to learn how to reproduce these patterns on Arras porcelain. Christelle Perrier's goal is to find a wider audience for Bleu d'Arras porcelain. With that in mind, she exports her delicately patterned creations all over the world.